Hi, Professor Ashwin. Uh, I'm super stoked for this video because not only because you taught me multiple circuit design courses, but uh, also because it's rare to find profs who teach well, uh, don't have a very strict grading, and also who are you know approachable and friendly. Hey, thanks, thanks, Ajay. Uh, it's great to connect again. Yeah, good. Yeah. I actually remember an incident. So in the first time I came to your uh, course, so initially it was online due to COVID, but the first time we had an offline class, you were near the student area, I mean the chairs and seats where students sit, and I was the first person to come to the class. So I thought I actually mistook you for a PhD student. <laughs> so I was like this, you know, that informally how you introduce us and you're like this. And then you also did the same thing and you went ahead and then I was like, oh, he's a prop. <laughs> You know, it happens quite yeah. a lot because, I mean, uh, most of the time security also, you know, like mistook, uh, you know, they, uh, oh. <laughs> and they ask, who are you, where are you going? Yeah, yeah. but from a student's perspective, I think it helps to, uh, you know, connect better, maybe. Good, good to hear, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, I, we can formally, like, have an introduction or... A journey of yours from your school, not school, but perhaps college days, all the way to becoming a professor at IITK. Okay, so basically, yeah, I uh, I did my bachelor's from uh, uh, College of Engineering, Indi, Anna University, from Chennai, it's a state government college there. So there, mm -hmm. uh, basically, yeah, I mean, uh, I was not keen in going to IC Design from the very first year. I just took Electronics and Communication because it was kind of uh, one of the most hot courses and typically it was assumed that if you take ECE you can also switch to CS right so I was mostly right, into, yeah. uh, uh, till my second year I was mostly into coding mm -hmm. you know Java you know C sharp blah 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 but later on I started to develop more interest in you know like uh, circuits and that's where I joined a uh, lab uh, under Professor P. V. Ramakrishna so he runs a lab called integrated systems lab there so he uh, he's a very senior prof and he kind of uh, uh, headed this, uh, there was a satellite program from our college called uh, Anusat. So he okay. headed the onboard electronics for that. So and of course it was launched later. So uh, we worked in his lab, so that's where I got exposure so, to a lot of different things. Basically we got opportunity to work on multiple different things. I worked on, you know, like uh, link budget calculation for a radio receiver. So we had to decide what is the, you know, like off the shelf components you have to identify to meet a particular, uh, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I see. Like, uh, this was in your third year? Yeah, third year. Yeah, third year. Okay. Mm -hmm. This was one thing. We were also taking readings from the satellite, telemetry, and then we were also, uh, yeah, projects. I mean, yeah. Hardcore circuit started because uh, he taught us uh, the equivalent of analog IC design. He also offered a course on data converters and RF IC design. So, three I courses see. I took. So that's what got me uh, motivated in circuits. And of course, I mean, yeah, and projects also, like I told it, one I was working on this, uh, one of the project was designing, uh, you know, a, a DAC for cochlear implants. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, my final year project was completely in signal processing, uh, compress sensing. So mm -hmm. this gave me exposure. And, uh, you know, that's where he, basically in his courses, he used to refer to Nagendra Shanti Ponsas lectures. So from there, uh, yeah. from there only I got exposed to Nagi Sir and Shanti Sir. So that's when I, you know, like, uh, was interested. So and then my third year, I uh, interned in TI for a couple of months. Uh, I got a TPO, but I was kind of, I was a very confused kid back then. So I was not sure what to do because I, I loved the TI experience. I would have loved to work there, but I also wanted to, uh, you know, be with uh, Nagi or Shanti, uh, you know, learn with them, work with them. Right, so right. That, was the, that was this TIMS program. So I, uh, yeah. you know, interviewed there. Uh, but I had also in the back of them and I also wanted to do PhD. Mm -hmm. So I was asking if, uh, I mailed Nagi sir asking if, you know, it's possible to convert TMS program to PhD. He told, I think, as of now, it, there are, I mean, it's tricky, it's not possible to do. If you need to do PhD, you should uh, play for regular thing. So I then went for the regular PhD. And oh. then, yeah. <laughs> But uh, did you like ever consider going abroad for a PhD or no, just India, idea? Unfortunately, no. I mean, somehow, I don't know. I was, probably I was kind of, it's the inertia, right? So I was more comfortable here. Yeah. And you know, my IIT Madras was just opposite to my undergrad college. Mm -hmm. Kind of opposite. 
so location wise also it was same so it was easy for me to be at home and i mean the major right. motivation for me to do phd or learn more was uh, listening after listening to nagi and shanti's lectures hmm. yeah those lectures are incredible i still refer to them exactly so i just wanted to work with them that was the main thing the phd was a means for me to you know work with them and associate with them for longer time. i see i see yeah and that time did you have a idea that you would eventually apply for a position as a professor or uh, i had i mean yeah when i uh, decided to do phd i thought I, one of the reasons was because i kind of like teaching so i thought maybe i'll uh, apply for uh, faculty position somewhere but it was not very clear okay it was an option for me because i kind of like explaining things i like teaching so i thought uh, let's go for a phd instead of just masters Mm-hmm. Right, right, and yeah. So after that, uh, you so you joined ITK. So how is like very briefly? How is the process like? Because I know it's really hard to be a professor here. So I mean, how is the process like? How is the process? I mean, process of joining here. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Let's say I wanted to join. <laughs> what do I have to do then? Yeah. I mean, see, basically, uh, it is basically what you say. First of all, you should. Uh, if, you should finish you should finish your phd obviously and uh, mm-hmm. second thing is there should be a requirement right i mean i would say i was at the right place at the right time yeah okay people teaching yeah, yeah. and uh, i mean in fact one of the reasons i didn't do postdoc was i thought there is an opportunity here let's uh, apply here it was covid time so mm-hmm. postdoc was getting tricky so yeah. i thought it's yeah. okay let's apply for postdoc if there are positions here i'll apply and of course if they are yeah. opening here they'll go into call you and it then it's all up to you like how good you are performing in the you know seminar how good you are performing in the interview and if the uh, each iit will have its own metric of you know uh, selection mm-hmm. process and uh, based on the yeah. yeah yeah right okay and uh, so in circuits like in phd you know you design the whole shape tape it out and all in postdoc i believe it's the same uh, like what do what does uh, change over there oh i mean one of the reasons why we might uh, i mean one could go for post office to just to work on a different area completely okay to broaden their uh, research yeah, interest to, yeah exactly right instead of you starting i mean of course you can start working on different area yourself but uh, let's say you join a separate research group which works on that area right right it's easy for you to pick it hmm yeah i see and plus also you get to know the work culture in different places right so that's a it's always a plus yeah and also you'll form a network so that you may eventually exactly yeah yeah like, network connections is another important thing yeah right <laughs> what i wanted to ask was that uh, in india particularly so i feel that the main reason why uh, you know because people say that in abroad if you compare to some research groups which publish a lot of uh, incredible work in top tier journals and all in india uh, overall like if you take the average and all the works are great but the uh, frequency of publications is quite small because i believe probably because of the smaller research groups or the lack of uh, you know phd students and so on so how what do you think about uh, is that a valid problem first and second uh, do you have any ideas of how to tackle that do you have any idea about how we can tackle that problem of uh, yeah yeah i mean see if you just look at the quantum of uh, you know works that is being done abroad in india i mean definitely uh, their orders of magnitude higher just because there are a lot of research groups in the us exactly yeah. yeah probably if you look at circuit design probably you can hand pick a few of them right so only a few of the groups work uh, you know hardcore circuit design mm. and uh, so that is why if you just look at the number yes definitely we cannot compete because the number of research groups working in the us is far more compared to india Mm-hmm. which hopefully will yeah. uh, the number will keep increasing in the near future that's what i'm thinking but with respect to the quality of work i would say we are still doing uh, i mean if you look at the yeah. places we publish from itm or uh, other places yeah. we publish same jsse and you know all solid yeah yeah and dicas so the mm-hmm. quality of work i would say it is on par but the quantity mm-hmm. just because of the uh, availability of or i would say the lesser number of people working it is yeah lesser. but in the near f- future i th- i'm hoping it's going to increase because uh, see back then probably uh, let's say when i was uh, you know finishing 10 let's say it's take 10 years back mm-hmm. probably uh, there were couple, three four groups working 
in circuit design. One from IIT Madras, definitely. Mm -hmm. IIT Delhi, mm -hmm. Bombay, probably. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I may, I'm, I may be missing some other places, but uh, yeah. I was researching. These were the places I could see. Okay. But now, if you see uh, from those IITs, lot of people have graduated. Basically, I'd say some three, four places were doing uh, hardcore circuits research. From those three, four places, many people have graduated, joined other institutes. Now they are starting their own research groups. Yeah, it's like a branch structure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, in fact, if you so, look at the new generation faculty members who have joined in all IITs, you can trace their roots back to one of the you know older IITs. Like yeah, the yeah. Karakpur kind of. True. Yeah. Yeah, but the, I think the bigger problem is that so because in, even in my batchmates, most of the very sharp students who wanted to get into this uh, area, they either went abroad if they wanted to pursue higher education and others, they just went to industry like me. Really. So the thing is, uh, I feel that the main main issue is students who are available to work uh, here. Really. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, students requirement is definitely there. Uh, I mean, I do not know what is the solution for this because uh, you are the person to answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes I do think about it. But uh, so the thing is, like, as a, from a student's perspective, like, if I suppose I'm choosing a group, so particularly in my case, so I did my bachelor's and master's like here from IIT Kanpur. So just for a different exposure, because I kind of have an idea of how things work in India, in the IITs and all. So I might actually go, if I decide to go, I would go abroad. Uh, just to get a broader exposure uh, in terms of network and all. But um, yeah, so that's the main thing. The other thing is uh, the breadth of research topics I observed in some groups. Uh, it's much more because, because as you mentioned, there are a limited number of groups here. Right? So if there's some other topic which I don't see here, I will then again go abroad. So that's one thing. And the most important thing, uh, which doesn't hold for me, but in general I see is uh, usually PhD people, you know, in India, I've seen people apply for a PhD just because they didn't get a master's or, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And they don't really have an idea of how, uh, what exactly it is before getting into it. And also, uh, even when they have to choose a research topic, uh, it's like they just leave it up to the guide. The guide will suggest something and then they're like, okay, I'll see into it. So I think that's a big problem when people should be more motivated first like, yeah, I mean, uh, it is fine for the students to not have an idea and join, right? Uh, because it, it cannot blame students because a uh, lot of them will not have an exposure on what's being done in the area, right? So, mm -hmm. so we are happy to take students. If they are not having an idea initially, after they join, mm -hmm. if they get motivated, that's very good. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, it is not necessary that the students have to come up with their own, you know, research statements, you know, what area they work on and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because uh, unless you, unless a student has, let us say, uh, read a lot and researched a lot, found out these are the probably key areas and maybe yeah. you know, she's interested in this, that kind of homework if a student has not done, it is not fair for someone, some, uh, for a student. Right, right, right. For the, you know, students to, you know, like uh, zero in on a research topic. So that's where I think uh, inputs from the faculty members definitely help. But from then on, if the student student is able to pick it up and, you know, like uh, take yeah, it, exactly. it, that's good. That's what we look for. We don't look for uh, students who have an idea as to, I want to work on this, I want to work on that. No, yeah. That's okay. As long as, from what I've seen, uh, any student who is good at basic analy analytical skills and logical reasoning, he or she will do very good in PhD. Mm -hmm. In general, like in circuits or, oh, okay. No, I feel this skills is required in general. I feel those students do good in any, wherever they go, right? Oh, right. Yeah. In multiple places, like in most of the cases, these two, uh, if you have those two good skills, we can pick up the rest and, you know, like uh, do better. Uh, right. Yeah. And yeah. So one more reason came to my mind that uh, in India, yeah, typically, so when one of my, two of my friends were deciding, one big factor was the time duration for a PhD in India. So in some, in particularly circuits, because in device modeling, I've seen people graduate in three, four years as well. But in circuits, I've seen in India, mostly it's like upwards of five years. So, uh, whereas even in US, I think it's five years close to that. But in some groups like Professor Razavi, I heard he uh, graduates his students within four years, under four. So he just has like one, you have to tape out one chip and usually their chips work somehow because of the great experience they have. So within four years, people are done. 
So that's also like a big factor, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I understand. Time, uh, time is not just decided by the work. It's also depends on the, in the sense, like the time taken is also dependent on the student as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, typically five, four to five years is what it takes. So that is why in India we have this integrated masters and PhD, right? So that's the best. Right. So basically, if you go for MS and PhD, typically six to seven years, two plus four, two years per masters. Let's say four to five years for PhD. Six okay. Years. okay. I see. So, you jo- after your BTEC, that's why all uh, IITs have this option of direct PhD or you join for mm-hmm. master and convert to PhD. So that way you spend, let us say, five, six years, you get both the degrees. So that way, time wise, you don't seem like you have lost a lot. It is mm-hmm. actually much better. Right. And uh, let's say someone, some student is, uh, he wants to enroll into a PhD program here in an IIT. So what's, uh, what can he expect as in what kind of, in circuit design particularly, what requirements uh, are there for him to graduate? Requirements are them to graduate. So that requirement frankly depends, varies from IIT to IIT and even from research group to research group, right? Mm -hmm. So typically, I mean, uh, so from my side, I would say if a student is able to come up with an idea of his or her own, a small idea and execute it herself with help from me. That is, that means that the student has become an independent researcher. That's more than enough. I mean, that is like the ideal point for someone to graduate. Initially, of yes. course, there will be handholding from, I mean, let us say you work on two yeah. projects, right? One project, let us say uh, you get the complete help from the faculty member. And the second, mm-hmm. it could be a very small idea, but the person should be able to, you know, like uh, read, come up with an idea of his or her own, and then with the help of others, execute it and finish it. I see. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, uh, I, the way I see it is, after PhD, the person should be an independent researcher. He or she should be able to do, take some topic, you know, and understand it, analyze it, mm-hmm. come up with some solutions to uh, tackle some problems. That, I see. if the person is able to demonstrate, I think, uh, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Sounds good, yeah. So, in yeah, one more thing. So, in India, the industry academic collaborations, uh, exist but they're quite less compared to uh, abroad so that's also one thing do you think uh, the uh, it might improve in the future or how do you uh, or you you might yourself have some plans to uh, initiate some collaborations so what do you think about that yes definitely uh, that is there we are still working on it but uh, you'd say in the coming future we'll have more collaborations simply because uh, let's say 10 years back right again if you take the scenario 10 years back the number of Companies working on IC design was very limited in India. Mm, yeah, we have the big major players, and uh, of course, if you take TA, as you know, TA has uh, you know collaboration with IIT Madras. They have this TA. Mm-hmm. Similarly, IIT Delhi has programs, right? Uh, but besides that, there were not a lot of companies. But right now, the startup ecosystem is pretty good. There are so yeah. many startups, uh, you know, uh, in India working on IP and you know, not basically fabulous companies working on IP solutions. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, from uh, personally, we are in, you know, like uh, close touch with a couple of startups like that. So that way, I would say a lot of projects we are, I am involved right now is defined by the companies. Oh, I see. I mean, it's good to hear because I was, I was actually about to talk about startups as well, because uh, like, I think Professor Harish from Columbia, he has his own startup, uh, I guess. Yeah. So similarly, I was going to ask, like, do you ever have, uh, do you ever think of, you know, uh, starting up your own company, you know, as a part-time thing? Uh, yeah, no, definitely no. I don't think I can, uh, you know, do that. <laughs> as of now, maybe it might change later, but as of mm-hmm. now, I don't have an idea. I don't have the idea of starting a company. But uh, there are a lot of talented people who have started companies. So the best thing is to associate with them and help them, you know, make products. So yeah, yeah. It's... Doing it. Oh, okay. I see. But yeah, so from a uh, startup from a perspective, I think it's quite difficult in circuits, particularly because you need a broad range of expertise, not just, you know, analog or digital, you need everything systems, uh, software as well. And uh, just to begin and also capital, right, just to start or you, you might have a better idea, in fact, that how much does it take to just send out your chips for publication. So, oh, sorry, I probably lost your question. So, yeah, there are, it requires a lot of uh, expertise. I mean, expertise yeah. remains as needed. Yeah, yeah. And also the cost uh, just to start up, right? Like if you want to send your chip for fabrication, it costs a lot. So, 
Yeah. And you have any like ballpark number? How much can one expect? Uh, I mean, see, I do not know the ballpark number for commercial. Uh, this one for academic research. Yeah, uh, academic. That, that typically, I mean, anyone can check the website. So typically, from TSMC, we uh, we go for this uh, MPW runs, multi-project wafer, because mm-hmm. we don't don't want to book a whole wafer and you know get like thousands of chips. So there, uh, you can we typically do with uh, new semiconductors. So I think uh, 5800 USD per mm square for 65 nanometers is a ballpark. I see. I see. Okay. Yes, you can add some you know shipping cost, blah blah blah. So. Yeah, and also the time also goes right. You have a couple of four or five months, I guess, for the yeah, chip to go. Months, four months. Once you send it, uh, within four months you should get it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's it. I mean, uh, the government has been, you know, has announced so many schemes to, uh, you know, help uh, startups, especially yeah. these things. So there are huge amount of money government has pumped in into this, so that uh, there are a lot of startups incubated. That, I mean, semiconductors is quite hot right now. Uh, yeah. Even like just in the last two three years, I guess uh, it just started to uh, raising exponentially. Especially now after seeing Nvidia rise up so much, <laughs> I think others have started to notice uh, more about semiconductors. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in fact, the, now I just make this joke, right? So ten years back, if you say that I work for a chip design company, people think that you're working in some lace chips or uncle chips, right? Yeah. <laughs> A common man knows. Okay, chip is uh, integrated yeah. circuit. Some electronics is there. So that kind of uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Thing has reached general public. So general right, public. right. Yeah, true. And so, okay, for you know, students, because there are many who, like you mentioned, don't have much exposure prior to uh, beginning their master's or PhD. So, what kind of advice would you like to give to them? Like, how can they, if they want to build a career in IC design, mm-hmm. uh, how would you, you know, uh, how do they get started? How do they move ahead? And let's say they're in some uh, a university where they can't find a good mentor or a good professor to help them out. Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, in this, I mean, right now I feel that information is available. It is just that we have to pick the right information from the right place. So, right. like, let us say 10 15 years back, where you had to rely only on textbooks, and even textbooks were not available, you had to go to libraries and lend it. But right now, uh, almost multiple, I mean, almost all uh, IITs kind of have their own recorded lectures, NPTEL courses, and stuff. So, uh, I would suggest if someone wants to uh, pick it up, they should start obviously from the basics, basic circuit analysis, basic signals and systems. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, if these two are strong, then you know uh, the basic analog circuits course, starting with single transistor uh, amplifiers and stuff. So pick from the best uh, place, you know, uh, you have so many courses from offered from all IITs, pick any of them and then, you know, I think then they can. Right, right. Okay. So we also kind of upload uh, lectures to the public so that it yeah. doesn't just benefit the students we teach, it can benefit anyone who is interested to learn. Yeah, I mean, I still refer to them as well because even though I've done those courses myself, first it kind of, it helps to revise. And because I kind of know, like I've learned from all all of you, right? The Imon sir and all. So it's it's just good to you know revisit those lectures and learn again from the same people I know. So yeah, so that's what. So uh, this is the best place I would say. And of course, uh, just learning is not enough. We just have to solve problems. For that, there are a lot of textbooks. So right now, I think there is no scarcity of finding textbooks. So, these people have to, you know, get and solve problems to get a better right. understanding. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, theory is one part, and the other part is like practical exposure. Because you might have seen in your courses also the first course. I think there's a, a project for two stage miller compensated or pump, right? So, and usually in that course, it's the first time when even me myself, the first time I did it. So, I tried initially. I started out with equations, textbook equations, and all, and then later. Uh, for me, at that point of time, those things weren't fitting. Like in simulation, I was getting something else because it was it was because of my own error. But that time, I couldn't understand why. And so, ultimately, what I ended up doing was just hit in trial, and you know, somehow got the answer and stuff like that. So, uh, but okay, it was still a great experience to learn. And so, for practical exposure, how would you you know, one is this project work? But in like some cases, like I mentioned, uh, they might not have access to these tools as well as uh, you know, university projects. So, what kind of uh, suggestion? Right now, this uh, freeware circuit simulators, a lot of them are. In fact, I think uh, two years back, probably we were also asking students to use LTSPICE. Mm-hmm. 
because mm-hmm. we are not having you know 50 licenses to support 50 students but right now it's not the case but anyways so uh, freeware circuit simulators are there i think they are pretty good for uh, doing uh, basic projects mm-hmm. and even okay. i think now uh, the solid state circuits community is trying to uh, democratize ic design so they have uh, i don't know if you might have heard right this uh, freeware uh, yeah uh, tiny tape out and all of them yeah tiny, not not, not uh, tiny tape out and yeah and this pico chip program is there where they offer mm-hmm. google has collaborated with that so the skywater pdk they have you know free tape outs so there they have mm-hmm. developed uh, free uh, circuit simulators and uh, commercial pdks has been provided so uh, in github people can find mm-hmm. right and yeah so one thing also i'll just digress from this topic a bit uh, in in the masters program at iit is mostly so most of the students you know that i also met and uh, talked to so their eventual goal is to get into the industry or get a job and so they come here let's say in the first sem and then just as they come they have their placements and all right so i mean so they are in the rush for that but also they have their thesis they have to decide about their guide their uh, project and so on how will they do their research so it kind of gets tricky balancing the both and especially because of the limited time because initially they just have to figure out the system the coursework stuff like that and just as they do that you have the placements and also the research so uh, is there like a, a better way to go about it like uh, because mo- most of the time what ends up happening is the students aren't able to finish up their thesis uh, and then uh, either the job suffers or the thesis suffers i mean something suffers uh, i mean i do not know the solution for this i think uh, you can answer what to do because this is the system and you just have to work around the system to uh, you know get things done yeah right? yeah yeah so i mean frankly speaking uh, that i think that's why we have this all the summer term right so uh, yeah that's what i did actually yeah the summer term courses i mean and itk we have the summer term so uh, if you can spend enough time during the summer term on your thesis get 50 60% of your work done because there you don't have any other commitments 2 3 months exactly thesis and get it done 50 60% of the work is done then let us say uh, you can you'll have sufficient time to finish it on time and graduate mm-hmm. yeah else it will extend for probably few more months or a semester Mm-hmm. So I did the opposite thing. I focused this. I did a internship at TI during the summer term. Right, so right. that allowed me to get a PPO. Then my job thing was sorted, and then the whole year I could focus on the thesis. Right. So yes. If someone asks me, I tell them to at least start thinking about the thesis beforehand. Like, don't wait for. Uh, you know, don't waste the initial time. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, you just focus on the time available right now. right now you don't have anything to do just do the thesis work and you know like get 50 60% of the work done that's what i've been telling my students right now so mm-hmm. if that is done i think uh, they should be able to finish it well within time yeah and on a other note like did you ever notice a decline in the quality of students coming to its or stuff like that uh, i wouldn't say decline of quality as such probably the mindset has changed a bit Okay. Yeah, I would say people kind of expect instant results. That's a general problem. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so that has that probably that is what uh, I think that mindset probably slightly has to change. I mean, you do, you just can't do something now and expect the result one hour later. Mm-hmm. So some of these is kind of a long term. You just keep investing time and it will show up and that's yeah. exponential growth. It is like you know putting in mutual funds and uh, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. So. so Uh, because, because i would say people who are coming to iits they are fundamentally very strong in basic math and science and that is more than enough to pick up any engineering discipline yeah right it is just that the, probably the mindset has probably slightly changed to get mm-hmm. instant gratification and instant results if they kind of relax a bit and understand okay it's a long term thing i think it's pretty good. yeah okay good yeah i asked because uh you usually in my opinion generously gave out uh, good grades so students you know because it's actually there in the back of their mind they have to uh, score well as well right because on paper the cpi and all those things also matter so either so so what would happen is i, I know it's like a by product that if you study you would eventually get a good grade but if they worry that you no know, this prof he won't give a good grade they'll be more worried about that than actually you know studying they try to find shortcuts like let's say they wanted to explore more of a topic 
they would think I can explore later. I will just, you know, uh, go through the past year papers to somehow. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. I never thought about it this way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so many people, even now, like, I am I'm still in touch with some juniors, right? So, they, when they, they ask me, should I take this course, it's like this here. So, yeah. yeah I can imagine. Okay. It's an interesting perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I, in my case, it didn't happen that way. Uh, I mean, I already, because I wanted to do all the courses, I knew I wouldn't maybe learn about them later on. So, I did end up, uh, and I, anyways, to, when I came in first year, uh, in first year, my perspective was to, I just finished JE that time. I thought, okay, now I'm in first year, I'll I'll just focus on what I like, I won't do what I don't like. So there were many compulsory courses like uh, engineering, drawing and all. So I actually scored very poorly in those and then my CPI uh, fell down a bit. And then it was only upwards from there actually. So then I thought it's already down three too, so it's okay. But yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so now uh, as a professor, like... Uh, you might, you know, have some goals uh, for, let's say, how you want to be remembered later on by your students. And because I'll tell you one thing, um, whoever I talked to from um, who, had, who was at IIT Madras when you were there or after you were there, they speak very highly uh, that you taped out so many uh, so many chips and all. They speak very highly about you as a person in IC design. So do you have any goals of how do you want to be remembered by your, you know, future generation of students? There's nothing like that. There is no long-term goal. I mean, I am just a fresher. So there are so many great people who I look up to. So mm -hmm. if I can, uh, the point is, I just want to make sure that I see right now. I am pretty new in my research. I have joined as a faculty member, and uh, I'm pretty new because I've just taped out one chip. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I would say I am just focusing on getting one tape out at a time. That's been my focus. I see. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah, I noticed you publish a lot of papers just individually as well, uh, even yeah, now. Of course, uh, in the last couple of years, probably, uh, I think we didn't, uh, there were not a lot of PhD applications we received probably in the last couple of years. So mm -hmm. that kind of, I mean, as you know, only one, I have one PhD student. This semester, we have gotten a good number of candidates. But uh, last couple of years, the number of applications were also very small. So we are not able to uh, get students. So that's why it was taking a halt. So I decided, okay, so I'll just have to sit and do it myself. Take it, take it as my second PhD term. And uh, so yeah, that's I see. Yeah. 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 Uh, I make sure that, I mean, the only thing I want to do is teach well so that students get motivated and, you know, like uh, pursue IC design as a good career option. Right. Yeah. I always say because when I was a bachelor, I uh, kind of didn't join TI. Uh, so, when I, I, I wanted to make sure that even though I didn't join, I at least train and motivate enough number of students and, you know, make them join in the industry. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, yeah, for, for a bachelor student, let's say for now, uh, let's take IIT or so. Because uh, even in my case, I fin finished all the, even the master's courses during my bachelor's time. So, okay. let's say someone, you know, theoretically, like if you leave the thesis part, they would get exposure to the courses uh, even through their bachelor's if they wish. Sure, so, yes. do you think uh, master's is like uh, recommended for them or uh, it's fine even if they do? Uh, I mean, if they're interested, they should do because see, you definitely they have done courses. I mean, a bachelor student can take all advanced courses as an elective and, uh, you know, like finish it. Mm -hmm. But uh, to get a good tape out experience, right, that will happen only if you go for a proper master's or a PhD. So, what mm -hmm. this will, what will help is because you have taken all the necessary advanced courses, you can start from day zero. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Hmm. Or even if you take the course second time, it will be a relearning, right? I mean, any course if you are taking for the second time, you will get a better perspective, understand yeah. from a different point of view. So that's True. what happens when I teach a course, right? I mean, uh, let's say I teach a course for the second, third time. The same thing, I get a different understanding. So I get to try to teach it in a different way. So, yeah, yeah. so that definitely helps. So I would I wouldn't say that masters is not needed. If someone wants to get that tape out experience, mm -hmm. or I would say uh, get a deeper perspective of the subject, I think they should go for masters where they get to relearn the probably the same topic, and that will definitely help. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, I didn't do my masters in IC design, but uh, that's what I thought that I'll get more exposure, and that's why I converted to a masters too. Mm -hmm. So. 
by the way uh, what are some what research topics uh, in circuits right now from your own research interests and also otherwise uh this, i mean circuit design itself is quite thing so i i mean from data converters i would say uh typically uh, right now i would say this time based uh, frequency based digitization mm-hmm. that is one of the hot topics so okay and uh, i would say uh, more on i mean i am doing something on dynamic amplifiers so that time personally interested so i do not know if it's a big thing but i just like it so i am keep doing it mm-hmm. and of course as you know this lptv networks that has yeah. a lot of space and lot of i would say potential applications i see i see and yeah you know all lptv mm-hmm. yeah and i asked you because thing shanti is uh, you know like pushing crazily is this uh, continuous time pipeline mm-hmm. the already unlocked data has uh, you know like uh, probably has commercial parts also so that will be another major thing so another major research topic okay yeah i asked because many people actually you know they message me or ask me that uh, i'm planning to start my thesis or if i join if i join for a masters or a phd what do you think are the hot topics or uh, what can potentially be a topic so because so they don't have any idea at all of what their interests are because they never actually did anything so but you know they, just to get some starting or a probing point to start so yeah that's why i asked each one will have their own perspective this is my own perspective of what see basically sometimes you don't pursue something because it is hot you pursue something because you like it you you are interested in it right yeah sometimes what i find is if uh, multiple people work on a topic with which they are interested in that becomes the next hot topic mm mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah so that's how the trend uh, is all the circle is that. like you know it's see there is of course one in which market is demanding you work towards uh, towards meeting the demands of the market so that's where all this mm-hmm. mma uh, circuits you know radar uh, you know uh, i mean yeah. circuit designs for radar communications those things are there but in addition there are other things wherein you know like multiple people keep working on something lot of interesting uh, you know uh, results come up in that and uh, as more and more people mm-hmm. start working on it that becomes an another area of yeah. what i see and right now so for you know if someone's watching this they might be thinking are there any openings that you all have or available positions to work with you oh we have so many positions yeah definitely for uh, ms and phd we have lot of uh, open positions even for working as a project staff at multiple levels like depending on your expertise uh, we have we have multiple positions open in project staff as a project associate senior project officer that kind of stuff so we are looking for uh, people because as i told we have uh, we are involved in multiple projects mm-hmm. we need my manpower so anyone who is interested they can actually reach out to us depending okay. on their uh, experience or i would say depending on their skill set we will offer multiple levels of uh, project positions right and would you require like any uh, of course probably a resume would be required but any letter yes, of recommendation yeah, is resume cv is required and uh, typically i think imon had posted already in linkedin so we asked them to uh, work on a simple uh, single stage you know five transistor op amp design and just we want to see how they are able to approach it oh okay i so see so that that's pretty good you are uh, you know like uh, you are a good circuit designer or circuit designer so again based on how they are approaching the problem we gauge how well they are uh, versed in the concepts and then we offer mm-hmm. a proposition yeah right i see uh, okay and okay so when students i'd like to ask you one thing that uh, when you submit papers how do you decide that whether you want to submit to a journal or a conference or uh, which which journal or which conference those sort of things so oh, i mean typically the best we obviously look for uh, jcc or iscc they are the top two places so when mm-hmm. we have a uh, very good idea and if we if we feel that the idea is pretty good and we get an idea i mean and we uh, get a, when we get it confirmed from basic simulations then we decide that this is worth taping out we tape out test it and if the measurement results are matching what we expect we definitely uh, try to go for jcc or any of the solid state circuit conferences mm-hmm. that is the thing if uh, let us say you have a little bit more theoretical stuff not maybe measured results but something on uh, fundamental theory so there mm. the multiple other uh, you know journals are there 
I see. I see. Uh, okay. Innovation for a different conference. So depending on that is where we take a call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And just by the way, there's a EDA ESD workshop at ISC this this in August, not this month. Uh, okay. By any okay. chance, would you be involved in that? No, I don't think I'm involved in that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because folks in ISC, yeah. Yeah, it's being conducted by folks at ISC. Uh, Professor Mayank uh, is the main guy. So I, I'd actually be attending that from PI. So I just wanted to ask if you're there. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, it, it's been like 45 minutes. Uh, so I guess you you also have another meeting after this. We yeah, yeah. end it up here. Um, so thanks a lot for sharing your uh, insights and thoughts with everyone. Great to have you here. Thanks, Siris. Yeah, I think you are. You'll. I mean, you want to become the next beer biceps guy, yeah? No, 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 <laughs> no, not at all. So. Is just that when I was at university, I used to think about these things that uh, there's because I used to contact a lot of people just to ask about what's going on or so that I can make a more informed choice. So I thought that uh, now that I'm in a position to do it, I should because I otherwise you will always think there should be someone to do it, but everyone would think that way, no one will do it. So I thought I should probably take the chance. It's good, I'm sure. I mean, you also have you know uh, your work and you're trying to find time and meet people and you know, like have discussions. Yeah, cool. usually weekends, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright then, I'll, I'll see you. Nice, nice catching up with you. All the best. See you.